Hello and welcome to our 3ds Max tutorial. Here we're going to be making a pawn and I've quickly opened the viewport uh, tab and selected our reference image making sure match bitmap and lock zoom pan are selected. Using the hand tool and the magnifying tool I'm going to move the pawn background around and get it lined up so I can really copy the profile of this piece. I'm going to go to create a line and I'm going to make sure initial type and drag type are set to corner. Then it's simply a matter of clicking and dragging. I'm going to use the shift key when I need a straight line. Otherwise I'm just going to click and approximate the shape of the pawn piece. It's not too important to be precise at this point because we're going to go back in and refine our points in just a moment. Now this Chess tutorial is part of the opening tutorial that's included with 3D Studio Max, and I thought it'd be a great place for us to start off. So we're going to use the spline and lathe method that is that is used in the tutorial in the 3D Max application. So again, just quickly, don't need to spend too much time in this part, but just go through and click your points, and then you want to close your spine, your spline. Then we want to go in the Modify panel and click the Vertex Selection method. Now we're going to go back in and refine our vertex points and as well as our line segments and really get a, a, a better shape. I'm also going to rename the spline here to Pawn. It's always good to name your object so you can keep track of them. So i got a point selected here and I'm going to use the Flay tool to round it off and then I just need to move the points over to better match up with the background image of the pawn. Again, same thing here. I'm going to fillet, which smooths out that corner. There we go. Move it back out. And I'm just going to continue to move up and make modifications as I go. Here I'm just going to convert the vertex to a smooth type rather than a corner type. And just going to move this vertex down a bit to create a straight line. Uh, this looks like another fillet, so I'm going to go ahead and fillet it. And there we go. You can see that it just takes that point and turns it into two points with a smooth transition between them. For this area here, I'm going to use convert these three vertices to smooth. So start with the center one and find a good spot for it. And then I'm going to go to the bottom here, make that a smooth transition. And then I'm going to go to this top vertice here and make that a smooth. So now we have a nice smooth line there. Looking good. So we're continuing to move up. I'm going to turn this into a smooth vertex and move it just a bit. But you can see that the, the bottom of the line here, it's not really what we want. It tends to have a little curve where we don't really want it. So I'm going to convert this vertex to Bezier Corner and then pull it out a bit. There we go. Now that's that's a much better curve. I'm going to do the same thing at the top here, create a bezier corner, and I'll pull that up and gives us a nice curve there. Now at this top, I'm going to select these two vertices on the outside of the ball and make them smooth and then I'll just adjust them a bit to get them lined up properly like so uh, at the bottom here we'll go with bezier corner again and pull that control handle out and we'll do the same thing at the top so bezier corner again pull the control handle out and try to get a nice smooth transition at the top here. We don't want it to be too coned shape at the top. So once we have this profile completed, we'll be able to use the lathe modifier modifier to uh, to make it a solid three-dimensional object. And the spline and lathe method works great anytime you have radial symmetry. So now I've just gone into the viewport, 
properties and turned off the background image. We don't really need it anymore. Our spline is looking good. So if you're satisfied with your shape, you can continue. Otherwise, you can use the refine tool if you need to add any vertex uh, dots in. So I'm going to convert here to the perspective viewport and give us a little bit of angle. So when we lay this, I can you know, really have a good perspective on what's going on. I'm going to go to the Modify panel, drop down to Lathe, and the alignment is not what we need, so I'm going to click this Minimum Alignment Adjustment, and that looks a lot better. It's also important in this case that we use Weld Core, which is going to weld all those central vertices together. You can see if we toggle it on and off that when it's off, you really have some mesh problems occurring. So turning it on will really help you clean your mesh up. Uh, you can also increase the segments as much as you need. This is what it looks like with 64 segments instead of 32. So it just depends on what kind of detail level you need. If you're going to be doing some close-up rendering, you, you're going to need some, a higher segment count. Now I'm going to clone this, but uh, before I do, I'm going to lower the number of segments. I'm just kind of looking over it, making sure everything looks okay. And then I'm going to shift and drag to create a copy of the object. And once you release, it's going to ask you if you want to copy an instance or a reference. For now, I'm just going to do copy. And I'm going to drag out one more. Let me line this up a bit more. That's about right. Go back to the original, and I'm going to drag it out to the other direction. And once again, I'm just going to make this a copy. Okay, looks good. So that's uh, our lathe tool. Now I'm going to hit the material editor and change the default diffuse color to a darker black and increase the specular level. And then I'm going to hit the assign to selected object button. So that's going to change our selected pawn to the black color. Now you can also just drag and drop, which I'm doing now on the other two pawns. Now I'm going to switch to a top view and create a plane. This is going to be a floor object. So I'm going to create a plane pretty big, just drag it out like so. And now what we want to do is align it. So I'm going to go to Tools, Align, and then I'm going to click one of our, one of our pawns. And in this case, um, we're going to align with the Y position, and we're going to align to the minimum of the object. So that just moves our floor down underneath the pawn. And you can see now that the pawns are resting on the floor. Now I'm going to bring up the Material Editor once again after selecting the floor object. And in the second slot, I'm going to create a matte shadow type <clears throat> and assign that to the floor. This allows the floor to be transparent except where it's receiving shadow. Now I'm going to go to Rendering Environment and make the background kind of a, a very light purple color. I'm also going to go to Rendering and go to Advanced Lighting and click on Light Tracer and then just close the box. This turns on the Light Tracer feature. Um, in the Objects list, we see we don't have any lights yet. So we're going to go create a skylight, which works with the Light Tracer. That's, that's why we had to turn on Light Tracer. This will give us a nice global illumination look. So just click in the top viewport to create the light. And I'm going to drag it up in our perspective viewport just to get it uh, separated from the ponds a bit. I'm also going to create an Omni light, which is going to be our key. The, the skylight's going to give us nice all-around lighting, and this Omni light is going to give us a key light. So I'm going to create it and move it up. So this will give us some distinct shadow and specular highlights. 
Now I'm going to make one of the ponds white. So I'm going to drag this black color to another slot. And then I'm just going to change the diffuse color to a almost pure white color and give it a new name, white pond in this case. And then I'm going to drag it and drop it on the middle pond. So now we have two black ponds and a white pond. Now in the Omni light, I'm going to make sure it's set to 0.5 on the multiplier and that shadows are on. And once the lighting is set up, we click the render button, gives us our image, save that out. Be sure to save your scene file and we will continue this project in future tutorials. Thank you.